this is my layout for the next lesson in course two. And in this lesson, we're going to be learning how to weave ribbons. Now, if you'd like to weave strips of paper instead of ribbons, you're welcome to do that too. Whatever you want to weave um, is fine with me. Um, this uh, is m my layout, but I don't want to take up a lot of RAM, so I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And I have here a working file for us ba back down to the basics. And what I have in this file is a background layer, and you can use whatever kind of background layer you want to use, um, solid color, um, if you've got a lot of busy ribbon is probably a better one so I have this with just a little bit of texture. Now on the bottom of my layer palette and I actually added here just for my own sanity uh, just a transparent new layer and I named it divider because the below this is all of the vertical ribbons and above it is all of the horizontal ribbons and that is important to have the um, vertical ones uh, on the bottom half and the horizontal ones on above it and then I also have here is a layer with a bow and this is the actual layer that I utilized but it's a little bit confusing especially not having anything in this corner um, to do this lesson and later on you'll see when we're making some squares um, you know I just had to go and delete where I didn't want them to apply for this but for the sake of this tutorial um, we're going to use this ribbon here and I do have a hue and saturation layer up there here's the original color of all of my ribbons I really kind of like it if I had a nice green outdoor um, photo but I have uh, some uh, blue sky ocean in mine and so I did change it to match my photo a little bit better. Okay, so that's our basic setup. And now this is um, a little bit more advanced tutorial, but of course we're on lesson 82 in course 2, so I am confident you can do this. This tutorial is going to be utilizing um, save selections, which we've never done before. Um, and uh, loading those selections and um, you're going to learn a lot about that area of Photoshop elements that you have not learned before and so I'm really excited um, to see how you do this. Um, the, set, the basic setup uh, is important through the selections and so let's take time to do that now. I'm going to select my first ribbon at the top and I'm going to note where it is in the layers palette. Um, yeah, m these are not in order from right to left or you know up to down in the layers palette. They're kind of all mixed up but that doesn't really matter. So here it is and I'm going to like we've always learned before hold down the control key and click on the thumbnail in the layers palette to get the marching ants around that ribbon. Now what I want to do is make a selection and I want to add to it for every other ribbon going down horizontally. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this one and we move over here to the new active layer. Now here is a keyboard shortcut I don't think I've um, shared with you ever before. and in order to uh, add to the selection when you're clicking on this thumbnail you have to hold down the shift and the control key and so I'm going to do that right now and then I'm going to select the next one hold down shift and control I'm going to let up on my keyboard to make the next one the active one hold down shift and control and then let up on my keyboard, get the next one, hold down shift and control. 
flat up on my keyboard, grab the next one, observe where it is, hold down my shift and control key, and click on the thumbnail. So now you can see marching ants around every other one. And now this is an important thing where I had to go back and redo everything because this uh, ribbon that goes up and down, the zigzag one, I missed it. <laughs> um, I think I missed it up here on the vertical. You'll see that later. So take a moment and really observe and make sure you're going every other ribbon. Now we're going to go to the Select drop-down menu, Save Selection, and I'm going to type in here, well I could type it in right here, but I already have it, and so we're going to do a Save Over. And we want a new selection, and I have every other horizontal one. And that's what I typed in there and click OK. We're going to control D to deselect. Um, you've got a peek there. We are going to have four selections when we get done. So I named the every other uh, horizontal one because we were starting with the first ribbon, ribbon number one. I named the next one horizontal two uh, because we're going to be starting with the second one and going back and grabbing all the others we did not get before. So I'm not going to uh, express all of this in language. I'm just going to quickly do that with the keyboard shortcuts I was previously explaining. And you can see, here we go. I missed this ribbon here, control D. See, take that moment. Take your time with this step and it will save you a lot of headache later. Now I need this one. So we have every other one. And I'm going to select and save selection. And for you, you're going to just type it right in here. But for me, I'm going to just save over. And we have horizontal two because we started with the second layer. Control D. Now we have to do the same thing for our vertical ribbons. So I'm, since I'm starting with the first one, we're going to be naming this the vertical one. And I'm just going to go through and get each and every one of these. There we go. So I'm going to take a moment and look very closely and make sure that I have every other one select, save selection, and in this case you're going to be typing in here the whatever name you want. If you just want to put um, vertical 2, you can. I have every other vertical 2, just how I happen to start naming them. Wait, it's vertical 1, because we're starting with the first ribbon. I'm going to get there. So I've saved that one and we have one more to make. Control D to deselect and here we go again using those same keyboard shortcuts. Mm, did I miss something? It's kind of tedious work. You have to really think. Um, so I've got this one, this one, this one. I'm double checking to make sure it's every other one. And I believe so. So now we're going to go up there, select, save selection. And once again, you're just going to type in your new name here. You're not going to have this. But we're, we've got vertical two because we are the second vertical row. Click OK and deselect. OK, that is key. If you get any of that wrong in the selections, it's going to be messing you up later in the rest of the tutorial. So now we're going to make a weaving with that. 
and I'm going to go and it doesn't really matter where my divider line is I'm going to select this first ribbon on the top and I'm going to zoom in a little bit now this is only going to work um, with uh, Photoshop Elements 8 and 9 this easily uh, because they have this uh, add layer mask icon. If you are working before that you're going to have to probably go and download Grants Tools um, because it will uh, give you an option uh, to um, uh, add a layer mask that easily but I think if I remember correctly you'll be finding that in your uh, effects palette maybe it might even be under this one I think I have a lesson for that around here somewhere I don't know so we have got our first ribbon layer as the active layer and what I want to do is I want to leave the ribbon going over this first vertical one but I want to make it going under this second vertical one and so on so the thought process in this is is um, do this when you're alert because <laughs> it takes a lot of thought to do this so I'm going to go and load selection and I want to load the uh, vertical 2 because I want to cut out w this ribbon here so it goes underneath this second one because I'm leaving this one so we're getting vertical 2 the one where we started with this one and now we have it selected here but um, what we actually want selected we because it doesn't work because we have these areas in between we what we actually want to select is an inverse select inverse so now we have all of these selected which include the little boxes in between and all I'm going to do is click on add layer mask and voila just like that every other one we could go all the way across is now over and under just that fast so we're going to continue on down and we're going to click on the next one to make it the active one we're going to get select load selection and in this time we want to get a uh, vertical one because I want to make this first one be hidden and underneath go underneath and I want the second one to stay where it is so vertical one and then select inverse and make that layer mask and now if you just get on the routine and don't think too much <laughs> remember we started with vertical 2 and vertical 1 so now we're going to go back to vertical 2 select load selection vertical 2 inverse add mask now we're going to go to 1 select load selection vertical one inverse and mask now we're going to go to two hardest part is remembering which one you're on <laughs> no kids around while you do this vertical two inverse mask Now we're going to go back to one, vertical one, inverse mask.
vertical 2, inverse mask. Now I'm almost forgetting where I'm at. Vertical 1, <laughs> and I'm concentrating. Inverse mask over under. This is what the handy undo button is for if you forget where you're at. Like right now, I just forgot where I was at <laughs> because I was talking. And so on this one, we want, I think it is vertical one. Um, inverse mask. Oh, nope, that's not right because I have two going under. This is what I mean by that handy undo button. What did I do? One. <laughs> Load selection. Let's do two. Select inverse mask. Yay. Okay, one. We are on one again. And now we are on two. Okay, so I want to observe, make sure I got them going. Over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. Yay! And the good news is you only have to make those masks for the horizontal ribbons, not the vertical ribbons. <laughs> there are going to be no layer masks on the bottom half. Yay! So now we've got everything um, weaving, but so we have to now work on the drop shadows to make it realistic. And this is tricky yet again, but we're going to use those same selections that we saved in order to do this. And um, we are going to make a new layer above everything and then we are going to I have to think of what I did um, load the horizontal one selection now I'm gonna zoom in our goal here is to put a drop shadow all the way around where these where the ribbons intersect where this one goes over so we we want we want the first ribbon and the sec and the third ribbon and the fifth ribbon where these ribbons are going over this first ribbon and this third ribbon and this ribbon we want to create a drop shadow going around. So we need to get where these ribbons going here intersect. And, oops, I accidentally clicked off my layer. So in order to do that, we need to go to Select, Load Selection, and this time we're going to put Intersect with selection and so we want to intersect with this first with the one that starts with vertical one so vertical one click OK so now you can see my selections are only going where this these intersect where it goes over the other ribbons that's hard to explain so um, I've got black in my foreground color just to make it easy for me. It doesn't really matter what color you have. And I'm going to hit Alt, 
backspace and it's going to fill my selection in. You could use the paint bucket, but alt backspace makes it a lot easier. So I'm not going to zoom out and hit control D and you see I've got all these wonderful selections made. And see how this is even working for the little squiggly ribbons. And so now we're going to go to our effects and we can't just use the um, drop shadow, although I tried that while playing, it didn't work as well. Um, we're going to do a little finagling to get this to look a little more realistic. I'm going to add a stroke of uh, black 10. Okay, then I'm going to go and change the visibility to hide all the black. So now only my black strokes are showing. And actually now at this point what I'm going to do is hit control J just because I don't want to have to go through and add the stroke and change the visibility every time I can save this layer style to use it for the next three layers that we're going to make so I don't have to keep doing that over. You can do it over again and again if you want, but I like to make things fast and quick. So now we're going to take this layer, right-click, simplify, change it to multiply blending mode, and we're going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I have my settings right now at 17.7 .7 pixels but if you come down you're gonna see this is definitely not enough so you just keep moving the slider up it this these numbers may be different depending on your file size and what you're working with and even you know I could go up even more this around 25 looks okay too. It all depends. Let, let me zoom in so you can get a better idea. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. You can see here at 17.7 .7, you can see how it is beginning to uh, look like some shadowing around the areas to help it look like it goes under or over. See down here it's not good. Keep going up till it sort of is blending and at these lower numbers you're going to have a um, larger bend. At the higher numbers oops 20 it disappears way up there in the 30s in uh, you know 20 is, seems to be okay too. It doesn't matter as long as you pick something that you think is kind of realistic. So here I am at 19.6 for this time, just different than the last time. And if I, you need to, you can lower the opacity a little bit on it. You can do um, a stronger one filter, blur, Gaussian blur, a stronger one meaning a lower number if you want, and then you can just lower the opacity instead of uh, the other way around. So now we're going to do this two, three, three more times. We're going to click OK and I'm going to zoom in so you can see what we're doing and you'll remember the the first time we got uh, the horizontal ones and where they went over the verticals so now we need to get the selection for the second row and alternating so selection load we're gonna get horizontal 2 and in this case um, this ribbon goes over this second vertical one. So that's where we want it to intersect. And so select load. We're going to intersect with the vertical two. And yes, I want it to be where this ribbon is going over. And I'm going to got myself a new layer. Hit con 
Alt Backspace and it fills it all in. Control D to deselect. Now I have this funky ribbon in here that has holes in it which is pretty cool but this actually causes more work and we're going to have to quickly take a moment to deal with it here. If you don't have a ribbon that has this, you're not going to have to do this step, but I'm actually going to make a selection of each of these and hit Alt Backspace to kind of fill in um, those holes um, all along, and I'm not going to take the time to do it very well. Uh, right now. You gotta fill in all of these with the holes. And I don't like to take video time to do this, but it kind of teaches you a little bit too. Watch the teacher be silly. Um, in this case here, I can't just draw a, um, so I'm going to get a black brush. I can't just draw a selection and fill it. I have to actually fill this in because the, um, was there any more of those over here? Okay, because it's a little bit zigzag. So there we go. We're, we're good now. Now we're going to quickly be able to apply these uh, this drop shadow because I saved this here. Copy layer style, right click, paste layer style, right click, simplify, and this time I want to run the exact same Gaussian blur so I could hit Control F or just click this right here and it runs it and I'm going to lower the opacity until it looks right and now we're going to go work on the vertical ones because we did all of the horizontal uh, ones so now we're going to work on the vertical ones create a new layer select load and I'm going to get the first vertical one now I'm going to come up here and observe where this first vertical one goes over and it goes over the second horizontal so I want to go and load selection, intersect <laughs> with selection and then the horizontal two because it goes over the second horizontal one and that's exactly what I wanted. Alt backspace, control D. Now I already have that layer style in when I right clicked and did uh, copy layer style it's still there so I can right click on this and paste layer style right click simplify and run that filter again and this time bring down that opacity to where it looks good and then we gotta do this one more time select load selection and we need to do the second one's going vertical. Now I'm going to take a moment and observe this one goes over the first horizontal ribbon so that's where I want to intersect. Select load the first horizontal and we're going to intersect with it. Click OK and there we have it. Alt backspace um, of course I need to observe if there are any of those that I need to fill in. I didn't even check that out last time, did I? Um, the problems will show up when you zoom in and look carefully. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I got any problems that I see right now from that last one. I can go and check it, turn it on and turn it off and see. You know, I may have to go back and redo it because it does look like there might be a little bit of problem here in the ribbon. 
but I'm not going to do it um, while we're on the video. So I'm going to right click and paste layer style, right click, simplify, so filter, Gaussian blur, and then I'm going to take down that opacity to where it looks good. Okay, so now we've got a lot of going over and under and we're looking a little bit more realistic, but now the whole thing is looking like it's pretty flat against this background layer. So we need to raise it up on this background layer and um, there are two steps of adding the drop shadows in order to do that. Uh, f first, we, 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 let's see, let me um, explain first that we are going to be adding a drop shadow to each and every one of these ribbons, okay? Because when we do that, it's going to, you know, add a drop shadow along the edges of each of the ribbons, but we want those drop shadows to be lower than these drop shadows that are going to be showing inside each one of these circles. And so we need to get um, some drop shadows inside of these circles to be, uh, not circles, these squares, I keep saying circles, these little squares where the background shows through, we need to get some made for there so that looks higher than the drop shadows um, on that are going to be actually hitting on the ribbon. Hopefully that made sense. So I'm going to click on my background layer and make a new layer. And I'm going to turn off my background layer for now. Um, the reason we're adding these first is because of this selection st step. If you add drop shadows to these layers first, the ribbon layers first, when you go to make this um, selection, uh, it's going to be considering those drop shadows and going to mess you all up. So it doesn't matter where you are at, select any one of these squares and just select in it. And get it all selected and then right click and choose similar. And now it's going to select every, whoops, Let's undo. That didn't do what I wanted it to do. Um, I forgot also to mention that you want to do sample all layers. So let's try it in this one here. And then right click and choose similar. And why is it doing that to me? I did not have this problem before. Let's go in here and I'm actually going to go up to the top layer see if that makes a difference. Choose similar. Oh goodness. This is Murphy's Law. Um, let's try it again. was just real fast every other time I did it. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Let's turn these off. There we go. See, when I have my mistakes, it helps you. We had these which we were ha having shadows growing. They're, they're very small pixels and so we need to turn those off. Okay, now we're going to select anywhere in between on these squares, right click and choose similar, and now it's chosen every transparent area on the layout. Of course, I should go back and, and undo these here. Um, we may very well do that in just a second. Go back down to my new layer, make sure it's the active layer, hit control or alt backspace and fill those in. And as I said, I don't really want to include all of these transparent areas from this ribbon here or any of them on this ribbon. So we're going to go get rid of those. 
Okay, now what we're going to do for this one is go to the inner shadows and choose the low shadow and what I don't like about this is that you have no advanced settings to change. I actually think it might be a little too high. If you're in um, the full version of Photoshop you could fix that. And then we're going to go to visibility and make it so we don't see the black, that we only see the inner shadows and you're going to see it makes a nice inner shadow in every one of those little holes. Just like that we're already looking better and you can turn these back on now if you want. But we want to go ahead now and add even more draft shadows so they come on uh, either side of every ribbon and so I'm just going to select one of these and I'm going to go get a regular old drop shadow. This is our last step. Um, just I'm going to click on it and then open up the options and I want a very low drop shadow because you can see what it's doing right here where it's making this shadow unrealistic casting onto this ribbon and so we need to make sure that this is right at 90 degrees so that that will go away and um, I'm gonna take this way down I have like 10 and 3 or so and click OK and now we're looking at this ribbon here you can see whoops I'm going to uh, clear layer style and then I'm going to redo the layer style I was trying to give you a before and after but it's not letting me go now I gotta go redo that again it's not letting me do that okay So what I'm going to do now is right click on this and copy that layer style and put it on every one of my ribbon layers. And in order to select all of these I click down on the top one, hold my shift and control, scroll down, click on the bottom one, right click and paste layer style. Now you can see um, I think we can do before all of those and after all of those so you can see how that really makes it a lot more uh, realistic and so there's a lot of drop shadow work there's a lot of details in this lesson and um, I think you can do it <laughs> it's not that hard if you follow these steps that I've given you and if you learn how to use the uh, selection, the save selection and the load selection. Um, it's going to be fun. Remember that you don't have to make a whole background like I did. Um, you know, you can do this maybe and then if you wanted to go further and, you know, uh, maybe merge them all and then well I might not merge them all but uh, you could go back in and use layer masks and hide um, you know certain parts of it maybe you don't want you know this section here or maybe you only want to even do you know this many sections uh, you could hide part of them do fewer ribbons a weaving whatever you want to do I would suggest starting out with a full one like this just so you can learn um, how to uh, do this and hey I've had fun I hope you've had fun I can't wait to see you do this one <laughs>